Hello everyone, welcome to a very, very windy Nevada. A uh, bit boring reason why I'm here, but the reason I'm making a video is that I have another American hire car, and it's another American icon, and this time it's a Ford Mustang. We actually didn't specifically book or hire a Mustang. We booked some Chrysler thing that was the cheapest convertible that we could find. And when we got there, a mysterious Chrysler convertible I'd never ever heard of morphed into a Mustang. So I suspect that's because they probably don't have any of the uh, Chrysler convertible things. And this was basically their cheap convertible option. So that should probably tell you a lot to start with. Now, when I was in America about six weeks ago, I had the Corvette, I was in Florida, and I did about two and a half thousand miles of driving, and there were no decent roads, just none. It was freeway, interstate, freeway, interstate, town, city, straight roads and stop signs. You don't learn a lot about a car doing it. However, driving through California, and then driving up through the mountains, and then on these desert roads, we actually had a nice variety of road for me to get to know the car a little better. So, my first impressions of the car, I really, really love the look of the new Mustang, the sort of 2014 onwards, I think it is car. Now, this one's a convertible because, you know, I was in California, now Nevada, and I want the roof to come down, and I'm generally not a fan of soft top cars, but the Coupe Mustang is gorgeous. I really, really like it. Now, I first got in the car. If you've watched my Corvette video, you'll know that one of the things I talked about in that was how impressed I was with the interior in that car. Well, unfortunately, this car did the opposite. You know, I, I sat in it and took one look at it and went, ooh, uh, I mean, it's pretty grim in here. It's black cloth seats, black everything. Everything that you touch is kind of a nasty, like scratchy, weird plastic kind of thing. And even some of the bits of the dash are like, they're trying to look like leather. I, they're sort of soft, but I don't think it's leather. It's got this weird stitching thing that's not really stitching. It's just like a mold, you know, pressed into it. So it looks like it's stitched leather, which is just a bit, a bit nasty and a bit cheap, really. Now this is the V6 model. It's a 3.7 liter engine about 300 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque, and it's, uh, I mean, it works. It's okay, it's, it's reasonably pokey, certainly sort of sub, you know, 70 mile an hour or whatever. Uh, the gearbox, I guess, special mention too. It is a six-speed auto, nothing particularly fancy. However, I felt it actually works a lot better than the one in the Corvette, which is this fancy eight-speed box that GM have. Now, in the Corvette, you have many, many different modes. You know, I've seen my disdain for that on that video. In this, you have basically two modes. Normal, sport. And sport mode actually makes a difference. You put it in sport and you can feel it change down straight away. It holds you in gear much longer, possibly too long in some cases, but you know, minor quibble. You know, when I put it in sport mode, that's what I want a gearbox to do. It wants to get ready and kind of go with me. And that's what the Corvette failed to do, and this does. So bonus points to Ford for doing that. You know, in, initial impressions were just not good, just from the, the, the quality of it, you know. The ride is, is very kind of floaty and bouncy, and you, you get the impression from most things in here and outside that this is a car you can really tell that you know a team of people and i i know every manufacturer does this but you can tell that every single piece of this car has been looked at and measured and analyzed from a, a cost perspective you know i was reading up on on some reviews of the mustang and things and when they developed the new five liter engine for the v8 they actually told the engineers that they had to keep some of the measurements exactly the same as the old 4.6 litre modular V8 so that they didn't have to change all of their tooling. I mean, this is Ford Motor Company and they're trying to script and save on tooling on their engine. You know, they're not Lotus, they're not making cars by the hundreds, they're making cars by the millions. So I really don't understand why they're sort of going out of their way to, to scrimp and save on some of these things. I mean, fair play to them 
Um, the 5 litre V8 is by all accounts very good. I've not driven a car with one, I would love to. If you're out there and have a manual V8 Mustang in the UK and you'd let me drive it, I would love to speak to you. But, you know, their challenge was trying to compete with Chevy and with Chrysler who are making cars with much larger displacement engines. They're trying to get a similar amount of power. You know, Chevy get about 450 out of the Corvette and Ford have got basically a similar amount out of the 5 litre engine despite it being about 1.2 litres down. So, you know, good fit. Other plus sides, you can fit four adults in the car quite comfortably. Um, sound system's okay. One thing that they've gone totally overboard with is the menu system in here. I mean, it's ridiculous. There are so many different gauges that you can get in here. I mean, you can have the air fuel ratio displayed. You've got cylinder head temperature, inlet air temperature, oil pressure, temperature. You've got transmission temperature. You've got the battery voltage. You've got so much stuff. I mean, I, I, you've got the vacuum display. I can't remember driving along ever and thinking, I wonder what air fuel ratio I'm getting. I mean, maybe some people sort of pay attention to it and need it, but I mean, Really, it's a little little bit much. Now, the first bit of my journey was on more or less sort of fairly straight boring roads, but then we managed to get some more exciting, more interesting roads with some half decent speed limits, did a bit of highway one, that sort of stuff. And the handling in the car is actually okay. It's, yeah, it does what it wants. Yeah, it's a bit too wallowy. It's got really, really high profile tires. And that's because it's a base spec car. This car, yeah, I've said about a lot of the things feeling cheap in it and you're looking cheap. Well, the fact of the matter is this car is cheap. You know, this car, well, a base spec V6 Mustang, which in America the V6 is the entry level, by the way, the EcoBoost sits above it, is about $25,000. A transit van here is the same amount of money. A transit connect is more, right? So a Ford Taurus is more expensive than the Mustang. That is a problem because in my mind, the Mustang should really be a flagship Ford. Okay, not in the same way that the GT is, but most people, including Europeans, in fact, especially Europeans, you think Ford, you think Mustang, you think V8, you think America. And this, this car here, that is just not a, a brilliant example of that. Ford are currently on a mission to make their product lineup more global, and I absolutely applaud that. And the Mustang is sort of spearheading that effort. You know, there's now a right hand drive Mustang, which is a big thing. There's never officially been a right hand drive Mustang before. You can go into basically any Ford dealer in the United Kingdom and order a Mustang. It's fantastic. And they are selling well. I am seeing them on the roads a lot now. You know, you never used to see Mustangs about. You know, if you're near an Air Force base, you'd maybe see a few, but otherwise, I probably would have had the same chance of seeing a Mustang as I would seeing a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. You know, they're that, they're that rare in the UK. But now they're appearing everywhere. And here's the problem. Ford have designed and built this car that they can sell it at $25,000 and still turn a profit. Looking at the configurators here, if you're going for a V8 Mustang, and why wouldn't you, you're probably spending about, you know, $45,000 or so. And then if you want to go for the Shelby's and things, you can spend up to about $65,000. The issue is that because this car exists, the V6, they're selling those cars with an interior from a $25,000 car. And it feels like the interior from a $25,000 car. And a lot of parts on this car will be shared with all the cars. You know, a few reviews picked up on the fact that even the Shelby still uses the same steering rack, which is not brilliant. It's a little bit slow and a little bit kind of indifferent. And that's obviously a racy car that should be using something a little bit better. But, it, the, you know, it's Ford. They're very conscious about sharing parts to keep costs down. And that's a sort of example where, you know, the expensive car suffers because they want this cheaper car to exist. And the thing here as well is that it's not like, uh, say, a Mercedes or a BMW where, you know, some people just want, say, you know, a 5 Series with all of the toys, all of the luxury, all of the nice things, but they simply don't care or don't want a big engine, you know, so they could buy a 520D or whatever, and they have all the spec. It's not like that here. You, you can't have the V6 with all the nice things in it. The Ford won't let you. It's not, the configurator is very, very frustrating because 
it basically will not let you pick and choose. You know, you've got to pick your trim level and engine to start off with. And if you want the V6, basically you're going to have a cheap ass car. That that is the end of it. And to me, the Mustang, I know it started life as being good value for money, and it still is. But I don't think Ford need to worry about making it so ludicrously cheap. The Mustang should represent everything that's good about Ford, and everything that Ford can do and can achieve. And I suspect even over here, the majority of the V6s are probably going to the car rental companies. All the Mustangs that I've seen out and about, generally that don't have rental car stickers on them, are pretty much V8s. Ford basically want you to buy the more expensive car. So, they need to ditch the V6, which they are doing. Personally, I think they need to rework the interior a little bit and bring the whole car a little bit more upmarket so it's a more premium product. So that when people get in it, much like when I first got in a Corvette and I had an expectation of what it was going to be like, my expectations were shattered. And I went, oh, actually, wow, this is a brilliant car. When I sat in the Mustang, my first impression was, okay this is like a nasty interior from the sort of late 90s and you know maybe being harsh on Ford because at the end of the day what could you buy for this money back home I mean not a lot really I don't know what the actual price of this car is but I suspect it's well under the $30,000 mark so that you know there's a lot of golfs that you can't buy for that money but they are finished and put together in a very very different way and there's a few other little things we noticed like for example the windows between the front and the back don't actually sort of meet in the middle. Uh, when you've got the roof up and you want to, you know, have your windows closed, they go, and that's as good as you get. And uh, we were talking to someone at the rental car place, not a service agent, one of the people hiring a car, who was livid that she was being given a Mustang because she is a police officer in her local town and these cars apparently get broken into all the time because you can basically get a hand through the gap in some of them this car included so little things like that really do need attention for otherwise though I actually kind of like the Mustang but I don't like this one I hope that makes sense because I can see from this you know where you can go you know take this you know coupe get me that Shelby GT350 right hand drive grab a blue white, maybe black stripe down the middle, something like that, I don't know, you know, now that, that is really a car that I could own, and actually, I think, for 27 odd thousand dollars, this car, I don't know what it's trying to do, I'm not even sure it's presenting particularly great value for money, but when Shelby charge about 60 something thousand dollars for a completely, fully loaded GT350R, which is basically the same money as a BMW M4 with no options on it at all, that car actually represents really good value. And that is what American cars should all be about. So I do like the Mustang. I just don't like this one. And I hope maybe someone watching that lives in the UK that maybe has a right-hand drive V8 one, preferably with a manual gearbox, might let me drive there so I can have a second go at it on more familiar roads. Thanks for watching. Bye.